Hey everyone, Ogbajaj here, and we're back again. Welcome back to Let's Play Ghost Trick. Uh, last time we started the process of saving Lin's life, we found out that uh, while we're in this uh, sort of four minutes in the past mode, we can pretty much move about uh, somewhat freely with uh, with the telephone lines. We can move about as long as a phone call is actually being made. Uh, after a little mistake, we managed to uh, get outside here to the junkyard and uh, we managed to find Tingo ready to shoot Lin. Uh, we managed to get him out of the way with one lot of uh, light, but I doubt that'll work forever, so let's keep going and see what we can do. Uh, actually, let's go up here. Uh, I doubt that pedaling the bicycle is going to do too much, but let's give it a go. Yeah, that did nothing. Uh, I guess we've got to close this door. Uh, can't do anything with that bicycle. Uh, oh, here comes a guard. Okay, so the thing about these guards is we can hop a ride on their nightsticks, which is useful once he actually moves. And oh, here's Tango ready to take the shot. If I want that position, I have to be careful of even the least bit of light. Mission ahead is my ambition for this year. Next year, my motto will be: if I want to be director, I have to be careful of even the least bit of scandal. So it sounds like you won't show up in spots where the light is on. And next year, I'm going to spread some nasty scandalous rumors about him. Now let's see if we can turn this flashing light. I think what you're supposed to do is turn on this searchlight, but uh, the flashing light is probably going to get someone's attention. So uh, let's try that. That certainly got everyone's attention, but uh, it didn't seem to do much. Hey, did you turn that flashing light on? It was me, it went off all words up, just get the heck out of me. Well, just make sure you lay off it. Don't want to waste any electricity. Have things gotten that tight? It's pretty sad. They're really putting the squeeze notes lately about using too much power at sites. They're only going to let us use all of our searchlights at once. Oh boy, we've got to be free to do at least that much, especially on a dark night like tonight. So that's hinting to you that uh, indeed you can't use all the searchlights at once. Uh, let's hop a ride on this particular nightstick and see, uh, going off to the left, okay, so there's that search for me. Uh, is there much else over here that he's going to take us to? The answer is no. Uh, we can raise the crossing gate again. Uh, let's see what happens if we do that. Oh! That, I think, is actually quite useful. Um, we can lower this. Uh, I'm just playing around now. Okay, that doesn't seem to have done much, but uh, it's brought up a thought bubble. Wow, such power and speed! I bet that would put a nice stop to my horrible hitman. If it just stopped him, that would be fine. But if it killed him, would I be able to get it to save him? Anyway, let's just focus on the stopping part. Apparently, thinking about things too deeply isn't something you like to do. Just the right amount. That's why detectives. Th that's the way detectives think about things. Now, come on, let's do this thing. Oh, I love stamping out evil. It makes me feel so alive. Except for the fact you're dead. Okay, so it looks like we've got to get him here. The easiest way to get him here, I think, would be to uh, have no light here, obviously. So, oh, come on, come on. Oh, no, we've missed our lift. Uh, can we get a lift on the way back? Uh, no, is the answer there. Uh, we're pretty screwed right now. Uh, what? Just out of curiosity, opening some umbrella, does it do anything? Aha, it does. It drops us way too far. That's okay, we can use the flag to get back up again, I guess. This is a pretty tight uh, mission, I think, this one, trying to uh, get Jigo here. Actually, I think uh, the um uh, hitting the umbrella, opening it up, was a very bad thing, because we can't get back up to that crate now, thinking about it. The umbrella was our bridge. So, actually, I'm going to go back to the fate change, and uh, I'm going to cut back to on top of that crate and see what we can do from there. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, we're back. Uh, back on top of this crate. Uh, I'm not going to lower it again for you, but uh, you know what that does now. So the idea is to get uh, Tingo down into the area below that crate. And to do that, we're going to have to turn that light off. Now, uh, luckily, even though it's, it makes him jump, the guard isn't too suspicious of strangely moving crossing gates. So, let's... Uh, can't quite reach. There we go. Let's turn this one off. That surprised him. Oh, there's, there's Tingo, actually, right now. Uh, I hope we're not too late. Because we've got to get over there, and the only way to get over there is if uh, this guy eventually... There we go, it makes its way. 
So let's turn this light on to stop him. And the idea is, basically, because we already turned one off, this one doesn't come off. Normally what would happen is if we turn this one on, the one off to the right, uh, hold on. If you turn that one off, then this one would... If you turn that one on, then this one would come off. Because the one on the left is on. But because we turned the one on the left specifically off, uh, that means that one stays off, and the one on the right stays on. So quickly do that, just to get the guard's attention again. And hop over to there. Time is passing. Yep. Oh, I said, hey, I told you to lay off that thing. And I told you it wasn't me. Oh, uh oh, I think I know, what, know what's going on here. This is the work of, you know... What? Hey, shut up, you're creeping me out. But you know, as well as I do, the only explanation for missions like this is... Inspector Cabanella! So tell tells about him as though he's a ghost, eh? But Inspector Cabanella is really a very nice person. Anyway, the point is... Now we're back over here, and oh, here's our assassin. No, oh, you're joking! Mm, this is quite a distance from the target, but I can't work under a spotlight after all. Never mind, I shot like this is nothing for a man of my skill. Mr. Vision Head seems to like dark, gloomy places. I'd be happy to throw him in a dark, gloomy cell. Come on, Cecil, get him! Hold up, when did I become her assistant? Okay, well, this is a pain, because uh, our guard happened to... Okay, come on. That do not quite. That'll do. Let's get up to uh, the crate here and give him a good whack. Ouch! That's got to hurt. Did you hear a scream just now? I'm telling you, it wasn't me. Nobody said it was. There. We found a nice dark spot for a gloom loving hitman. I think it has just been erased. Again. That confirms it. Why not, I wonder? Huh? Why don't I have powers like yours? If I could do things like you do, it would, it would really help me pursue my case. Why only the special few, huh? It's not fair. That's the same thing the little doggy said, too. Well, I'm jealous of you, actually. You are? Why? Because your life can be saved, even if you die again tonight. Save you with my ghost tricks. Nobody can save my life, though. Oh, these powers are dead. Are they just me? But I find the answer to that question tonight. Cecil, so, so, I'm so sorry. Well, you're free to do as you please now. I guess this is goodbye, Detective. Will we ever see each other again? If you want to see me again, all you have to do is die. Okay, got it. I was kidding. Well, guess we'd better be getting back to the present. With a fully alive limb. That's what we like to see. Lynn has escaped death for a second time, but that doesn't mean she's out of the water yet. Better go see how she's doing. Uh, we don't... Now, I think, is when we do this umbrella. We don't have the, um... Guards to truck us around anymore. Don't ask me why. They're just not patrolling anymore. So, we've got to come down here and then go via the phone line, actually. Funnily enough. Uh... No, no, no. Down here. Down. Across. Here's the phone line. Well, it looks like congratulations are in order. You have raised yet another death. But I haven't got any further in solving my own mystery, though. But that woman holds the key. Don't forget that. Lynn, huh? Now that she's alive again, she's probably still being detained in the super's office. She won't be able to pursue her case without the freedom to move around. I'd better go back to the super's office and see her. That sounds like a good idea. Guess what? I'm completely not going to do that. Uh, let's go to the chicken kitchen. See if anything is happening there this chapter. As I said, these sorts of events tend to happen by chapter, so if anything is happening, it'll happen now, and then we'll get another one before next time. I don't see any customers hungering for chicken tonight. I hear singing coming from the kitchen. <laughs> la la la, tonight I'm in love, in love with you and only you. My darling Miss Chicken, let me shower you with gifts of salt and pepper, la la la. He's not a bad singer, but I guess I'd better be going. Oh, you can even hear him singing. I can hear him singing in my ear anyway. Uh, if you've got uh, headphones on, stereo headphones, you might have heard him singing too. Anyway, let's go back to the uh, Super's office and see how Lynn's doing. So I was to go back to the office where Lynn was being detained. With her changed fate, her story was sort of changed too. Maybe that would lead us in some new direction. 
Now that Luna's alive again, I wonder what she's doing. She said she was investigating an important case tonight. Could that case be really connected to me in any way? So if you come in place, no thank you. Uh, but I will continue playing. And you know what that means? That means we finished this chapter and we're on to chapter 5, 8.34pm. When Lynn lost her life for the second time, she was being detained on suspicion of my murder, but I saved her, hoping to solve my own mystery. Living creatures can choose to live their lives in one of two ways. They can either submit to their fate, or they can try to change it. Lynn is definitely in the second camp. As soon as I got back to the junkyard superintendent's office, this fact was really brought home to me. Fool! I told you not to let the suspect out of your sight. My apologies, sir, but I never thought she would run away. Lynn's our angel, I mean, friend. I mean, she's like family to us. Angel, friend, or family, and they all run when they have the chance. Do you have any idea how many years it's been since my wife ran away? <laughs> I'm very sorry, I had no idea, sir. <laughs> You'll never make detective at that rate. Now find Lynn. Yes, sir. <laughs> Inspector Cabanella gets word of this. It's all over. So a red-headed detective escapes, did she? But I just barely saved her a few minutes ago. Wow, she's fast. Well, I guess I'll look around for leads. Uh, as usual when we start a new chapter, let's uh, go around to some completely uh, irrelevant phones and see what we can see. So let's go to the drug card first. There's Ray, happily bobbing around. Oh, back again? Yeah, just checking to see if anything's new. Well, let me see. A moment ago, your corpse was taken away by the police. It was? Oh. I guess I'll never see my poor corpse again. Nothing is permanent. We lose everything at the end. But there are some things we can get back, right, Ray? I suppose you're right. Yep, that's it. Just a little conversation with Ray there. Uh, luxurious parlor I'm assuming we can't get to right now. The sign doesn't seem to be working. Lynn's apartment we almost certainly can't get to because the phone's dead. Yep. Lady's red apartment we can go to though. What's up there? Still typing away. It looks like the novelist is still taken up with her Prime Minister. The atmosphere is so thick in this room it's enough to make your eyes smart. I think I better leave before this air suffocates me. Oh, no amusing dialogue or uh, excerpts from her book. The Child Man's Office, anything interesting there? By any chance? Maybe I was wrong. Maybe Emma was right. Maybe it was a mistake I was ever born at all. But wait a minute, if I'd never been born, Amelie wouldn't be here right now. Oh, it's gotten to the point where I don't know what my mistakes were. What defines a mistake, anyway? If something isn't right, doesn't that make it a mistake? I'm out of here. <laughs> He's uh, still sulking, and we still can't really do much in this room, so... Uh, let's go to the park. Oh dear, what's uh, Leaflet Man going to be up to now? to the Lady Deserted Park. Oh, they're gone. The detective who was ordered by Kevin Ellis to perform a stake out is nowhere to be seen. Maybe he's in the restroom. I wonder if that strange young man followed him in there. I seriously hope not, but uh, that's uh, nothing much happening there, surprisingly. And finally, it's a new chapter, so even though we just visited the chicken kitchen, let's go visit again, shall we? Still no customers. I don't see any customers that have a date with chicken tonight. I hear singing, more singing. La la la, I love you, I swear it's true. I truly love you, but by my goosebumps, I swear, la la la. He's not a bad singer, but I guess I'd better be going. 
So, uh, yeah, nothing much uh, interesting on you there. Let's go back to the super's office. Okay then, so uh, it looks like a couple of minutes. Let's have a quick look around before we finish the video. Uh, there's a kettle here. Can't do much for that. Can we look at this notebook? Let's have a look. Lynn's notebook, sad and forgotten, sits behind the bookshelves. Who could she have been calling on the phone before she hid it there? I wish I could find out. But we cannot find that uh, book up there. We can't get to uh, this step ladder we can get to now, and we can actually move it across the room so we can uh, see what's happening on the other side of the room. There's a conversation here. That old pigeon man. Do you suppose he's carrying out some sort of research here? Look at all these precision instruments and complicated devices. What are you doing? So, I think maybe this is holding us through here. She could possibly fit in that tiny little elevator. Oh, I don't know, sir. Lynn is pretty slim. Fool, don't you know that women can make themselves appear slim through fashion? <laughs> to this day, I still don't know how much my wife really weighs. <laughs> That's one of the uh, funnier lines in the game, I think. I'm very sorry, I had no idea, sir. I'll never make detective at that rate. Poor police officer. He's had both detectives uh, say he'll never make detective at this point. Anyway, where's that old pigeon man? Oh, him, sir? He went through the door behind me, sir. Which is locked. He remembered to lock it behind him this time. It won't open. Apparently that door leads to the basement, but it's currently locked, sir. No, really. These instruments, they're all very suspicious. You better keep your eye on that old man, too. Yes, sir! Okay, so uh, I think that's about it for this time. Uh, next time on Let's Play Ghost Trick, uh, I guess we're going to try and find Lynn, or maybe see what the old man is up to. Uh, I guess having a little bit of explore around here, maybe go back down to that basement we went to before, who knows. But uh, either way, we're going to be finding something out next time, I'm sure. So, uh, see you next time, everyone, and bye-bye.